Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video <laughs> because <coughs> it's been a while. To be honest here, I just got up. I got up at 7.40. It is 8, 18 in the morning here. It is December the 29th. 2023 it's a Friday so this is like a Friday reads a Friday update yeah my wife is gone this morning she went out for breakfast with a lady that she her and this lady they are gonna fold church bulletins after they have breakfast and then she's going to her younger brother is retiring today from his job and she's going to the retire retirement thing after she tr folds church bulletins. So I woke up this morning with an empty hermit hut. <laughs> Nobody here except me. And uh, so I thought I'd make a video because it's a Friday. And uh, I, I'm, I have been sick. I got this a, like a stomach virus. Oh, must have been Wednesday today. Yeah, it was like Wednesday. I got really sick on Thursday, and I hadn't. And then it went away by Thursday, and now I got this dry cough, and uh, nothing tastes good. I've lost my appetite, so I've been trying to just lay low here yeah if I don't feel better by by next week what's the day I'm gonna go to the doctor but there's all kinds of viruses going around now this time of year people got together for Christmas spread their bugs all around but anyway I thought I'd just stop by and say good morning Happy Friday. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you had a good reading week. Uh, I started typing out in my uh, online diary, Crooked Fingers, all the books I read or attempted to read throughout the year 2023. I, I did six months yesterday. I did from, what was it, January until June. <laughs> and then today, I'm going to do from July until the end of the year. I tend to, as I was looking through that list of six months of reading, I read basically what I show in my videos. Uh, I read a lot of all kinds of things, essays, history, literary fiction, theology, Christian spirituality, things like that, monastic theology. I write in my diary this morning uh, we're coming to the end of 2023 I'm on page 1147 for today December the 29th I already got my J January 2024 diary ready uh, this I don't make it huh yeah, I woke up this morning because yesterday that fellow I mentioned to you that I read his blog for years who lives here in Holland, he died yesterday. He was like in his, a little older than me. One thing I always liked about this guy, he, uh, he was a lot like me in some ways. He uh, had long hair and a long beard and kind of a hippie type but he really wasn't. I always considered him an old liberal intellectual. He was a church organist and uh, his daughters went to high school, same high school our, our kids went to and I always was kind of intrigued by him because he always drove old cars and he always wore old clothes and he was a musician, he was a trained organist he loved music, uh, he composed music, he uh, played all kinds of instruments. 
guitar, harpsichord, organ. He played all kinds of music and uh, he read poetry and he had always buying books and always talking about music. He led the church choir. He uh, was a trained organist and a very serious kind of guy. And uh, I tried years ago to get be friends with him, but then I realized <laughs> that I was, um, I tend to start relationships with guys and they never really work out. <laughs> I can't sustain them for some reason. I can't sustain relationships. Especially if I don't have anything in common with the person or because I'm so used to just in my own little world that I, if I don't find somebody who's in that same world I have a hard time maintaining the relationship. I kind of it kind of loses some kind of momentum or but anyway I always liked Steve and every time I he was a vegetarian and so we would run into him my wife and I at the store he'd be buying he was always cooking food he was a vegetarian his wife wasn't so they always had different diets and we would run into Steve at the store he would be buying fresh vegetables and fruit and the farmer's market and you know he had this long hair and the big beard and always wore this old, old long black he always looked like a professor type <laughs> like a, I always and he was always I, I read his blog for years which he always just talked about poetry and talked about what he was reading and he always read the New York Times he did the New York Times crossword, crossword puzzle and he was just a very interesting guy and I really always like a kindred spirit in a way because I uh, you know I'm a you know I have a long hair and a beard and I like poetry and, and art and music but I'm a Christian <laughs> and uh, I just felt, I felt kind of sad when I found out last night. Like, my wife and I, we'd been taking food over there. Uh, we, I knew that he was going to die, so my wife and I, we signed up to bring meals over to them, and Carol took food over there. And by that time, he was in hospice, and he was... One thing about, he also, Steve, his father was a minister, his brother, older brother, is a retired Episcopal minister. And I'm sure that the church that he was an organist with for many years was there at his bedside. But I always just kind of felt bad that I didn't go over there and say goodbye. <laughs> I had this, I always feel bad about that. I know right now about people who are dying that I went to church with and I know that they're going to pass away and I had this thing about death I, I can't go to funerals maybe it's because of my mother's death I get really uh, it's like I'll give an example is that <clears throat> well, here's a picture of my this goes along with uh, on Christmas night we had a, my other brother who I haven't seen since he was a baby he arranges these these four ways on my wife's iPhone. So there's there's Robert, my younger brother, who I haven't never had really known, and then there's my brother Mike, who's after me, who's 66, who works for the Washington Post as a photojournalist, and then there's my sister Robin in Maryland, who's going through chemo treatment with cancer. And then Danielle, my younger sister, she wasn't on the iPhone 4-way. She never showed up. So there was just Mike, Robert, Robin. You had Robert and his wife, and Mike and his daughter, Rose May. And she was about, she's about seven, I think. And then there's Robin, 
who was at Christmas night at her daughter's house. And we were all just talking and, and then about Christmas and about my sister Robin was talking about her chemo treatments and I found a little bit more out about Robert and his life and how he grew up. And then after the, then it ended, but we stayed on and talked to my brother Mike, who's, you know, I'm the oldest of five, and there's Mike after me. And so it was really interesting talking to Mike. And about, he's a photojournalist, and I asked him, you know, he still goes on the road. He has assignments all throughout the South. And I found out why he does the South is because he only goes a thousand miles from where he lives and it's kind of unspoken at the Washington Post that his territory is the South. <laughs> anyway, he, I told him about this photo that I, many years ago our son Josiah got really into Ancestral.com and he was really into finding out the history of our family, our ancestors. and. He got these old photos of my mom, our mom, and uh, her <coughs> sister and her brother. And, and I mentioned this old photo to my brother. He wanted a copy of it, and some Carol got a copy of it. And the little girl there is my is my uh, sis, my mother, and the the. Old, That woman in the corner there, when the, I can't. The, the other woman is my Aunt Billy. She passed away. And then the little boy smiling is my Uncle Marty, who passed away. The, the guy in the back, I don't know who he is. The woman, or my mother, is little girl. That's my grandma. Uh, her name was Ru Rudy or R Ruby. She pa she passed away. I never met her. So anyway, so I've been thinking about the you know it's like all these people have passed away. They're all gone, <laughs> and I don't know anything about them. I don't know anything about my mother really. I know I don't know anything about my aunt. I know vague th facts, and my uncle Marty. I don't really. You know, I, he he grew up, of course, and then as I mentioned to you that when I was in California after my mother died, my uncle Marty was the he was the city surveyor for the city of Berkeley. <laughs> he was like an engineer, and he he had kids. And they all grew up. He, he, he had, his wife worked for a major hospital in Oakland, California. They were really, you know, really well off. But I never, I never they never were friendly. <laughs> and uh, of course, my aunt died when I was uh, just before I left California. My my aunt got really sick with cancer, and she died. But I don't know any of these people, you know. It's, you know, we. It's like we all. We're we born. We are born. We grow old, and we die. Steve. He's gone now. He's in eternity, and I don't really know if he was a Christian. I don't know anything about him. His spirituality. He always seemed to be. Not interested in Christianity, even though his father was a minister. I never could figure it out <laughs> why a church organist didn't have any relationship with the living God. Maybe he did. Maybe in a way that I don't understand. I don't comprehend. I'm not going to judge the guy. He might have been a Christian. I just don't know. And that's one thing I, I told Carol last night. I don't want people to say, well, you know, I don't know if Johnny King was a Christian. Did he really love the Lord Jesus Christ? Did he really seek to live a holy life? Did he really seek, did he long to be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ and to worship him? To be with the saints and to be with the elect angels? I don't want 
to die and people say, I just don't know if this guy was really a Christian. Uh, you went to church, you sat in the pew, but you know, he was a good guy. <coughs> but I want people to know that Johnny Keynes loved the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyway, that's been on my mind this morning, how life is so short. We're here for a moment and then you're in eternity. Steve's in eternity now. There's no, there's no day of salvation. There's no time to get ready for death. Death has come and taken him. So yeah, I wanted to show some books so I can get rid of them down the lower level. This morning I've been, well last night, I read before going to bed, The Humble Sinner Resolved What He Should Do to Be Saved by Obadiah Sidwick. Yeah, I read this because this is what I, I'm finding this book comforting in my, as I mourn, as I grieve. So I really recommend this book. This is one of the best books I've read by a Puritan in a long time, and I highly recommend it. But what I want to show you is, I didn't get any Christmas presents this year, so I bought myself some presents. Now, I'm not really into Christmas, but you know, I, I do appreciate it when somebody buys me something, but if they don't, it's okay. You know, for, you know I never really celebrated Christmas until I met Carol. And even then, we don't make a big deal out of Christmas. But, you know, it's always nice to get something. But I bought myself this book, the Celestial Harmonies by Peter S. I can't pronounce it. He's a, I think he was a, uh, I think he was a Romanian writer. I don't Let me see. I think it was translated from... I can't remember if it was what language, but some it was some Eastern. Oh, I can't remember if it was German or. Anyway, I got this. The reason why I, this is translated by Judith Solokuski, I can't pronounce, but she translated this book I've been reading, The End, by. Taylor Bartis and she translated this that's why I and I, I read about it on her I want to look at other books that she's translated and so I found that she did this one and it looked really fascinating I won't go into it because of time limit I've been on her 18 minutes and I already got some two other books I want to show so I got that Celestial Harmonies and then I picked up these photo art books by Voldman. As you know, I've, I've been into Voldman for, I don't know, forever. And he just put out this set, uh, photos from eight, 1980 to, nine, to, to <sighs> photographs from 1980 to 2022. And he, if you if you look at his uh, his books, he does a lot of photography, and he put he put these books out showing his photography from nineteen. It's called Shadows of Love, Shadows of Loneliness, Volume One, Photographs, nineteen eighty to nine. 1980 to 2022 by William T. Voldman. So I got this, uh, I got, it was on sale from Amazon and I decided to get it because I didn't get, uh, s several years ago he did a big volume of photos called Imperial. He did a big, huge, massive book on Imperial Valley and he did a, a separate volume of photographs and I didn't buy them even though, and I always regretted it, and so I told myself this time, 
I'm not going to regret it. I'm going to get them. So this is the second volume. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this is uh, volume two, Drawings, Prints, and Paintings, 1985 to 2022, Shadows of Love, Shadows of Loneliness. So, so these are, and here are like drawings, paintings. This is basically an art book, but if you're into Volman, Yeah, here's a picture of his, his studio in Sacramento, California. Yeah, he bought this old restaurant and he turned it into a big, huge... He does all kinds of artwork. He does photography, painting. He does, he does design special book covers. He, you know, he, he writes these massive books, which I've shown you, the rising up and rising down, this huge, massive thing. And he's always kind of uh, he's kind of like a maximist writer. So I've always kind of uh, found him very interesting, Volman, William Volman. I I read him even though he's he's uh, not everybody can get into Volman, but I've always found him. I I I admire anybody who does their own thing, even though they might not make a lot of money. And uh, Voldemort does have his followers, uh, leaf by leaf on BookTube. He showed these volumes. He got the special uh, two volumes in a slipcover case, which I couldn't afford. <laughs> but Voldemort, uh, leaf by leaf, he has a huge following. He's a great book reviewer in BookTube, and he showed these. And uh, but mine was on pre-order and I got them just the other day. They just came out. So I want to show those so I can put it with my Voldemort. I have a whole shelf of Voldemort. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, as far as what I've been reading, I've been sick, like I said, watching a lot of college bowl games. But I've been reading The Valley of the Fallen by Carlos Regas. This is translated from the Spanish by Edith Grossman. This is what I've been reading and also I've been reading the, the biography of Francis Bacon, Anatomy of Enigma by, I can't pronounce that guy's name, but I've been reading this when I'm not coughing, vomiting, having diarrhea, feeling, thinking about the past, thinking about people dying, thinking about the Day of Judgment, how life is so temporal and transitory, and I need to get my crap together before it's all over. It's like, it's like, you know, I just, I see, I'm, I'm more, since I've been faced with death, like I said, my wife has lost three of nursing friends lately, and she's gone to f visitations, and People are retiring, people are going into eternity, and I'm going to be 72 next year, and life is just passing by, and I need to get myself <laughs> together. I haven't really got back into the end lately. I do plan to in the year 2024. I don't know when I'll read Celestial Harmonies, but I look forward. Check it out. It looks really fascinating. I, it looks really worth reading. Always read Obadiah Sedgwick, The Humble Sinner Resolve, What He Should Do to Be Saved. Voldemort, like I said, is one of a kind. I do have some more old photos here. I got maybe a little time. I just showed you. This is an old photo of my mother. Yeah, I never knew my mother, and that's probably, I never knew my father, I told you, I never, you know, I was born out of wedlock, I was a bastard, and I never knew my father, I never knew my mother, you know, here's a picture of her, who was that woman that was killed by a speeding ambulance in December of 1968, who was that woman? 
who, who gave me birth and brought me into the world. Who was she? You know, it just mystifies me. So anyway, I hope you had a good reading week. Have a good New Year's Eve. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, life is short. Today is a day of salvation. So yeah, I'm feeling kind of grieving for Steve Jenkins and he has he had two daughters and a wife and his brother was an Episcopal, a retired Episcopal minister. His father was a minister. His mother seemed to be a devout Christian. And so yeah, I really like Steve. So anyway, thank you for subscribing. Do pray you have a good reading weekend. I'll probably watch football. Read some Puritan spirituality. Yeah, The Valley of Vision is historical fiction on the Spanish pain, painter. Uh, how is pronounce it? Gaga, Guga, Galga. I can't pronounce it. It always bugs me. I always forget how to pronounce it, but it's on that Spanish painter. Gu Galia? Gulga? I can't pronounce it. It just bugs me. I, I, Galaga? It's G-O-Y-A. I don't know why I can't remember how to pronounce it. But that's his painting, The Furies, on the cover here. Anyway, hope you're all doing well. I could probably get over this sickness. And thank you once again for the comments. Thank you for your your support. And until next time. Yeah. Once again, I have a happy new year. May 2024 be a year of world peace. <laughs> Bye.